Um, and now, uh, our third talk of the second half. Um, we're going to be listening to Thomas Richardson, who's going to be telling us about marrying your mother, apparently, um, and the role of sexual imprinting on who we find attractive. If you welcome to the stage, Thomas Richardson, please. Hello. Great. So um, I'm Thomas Richardson. I'm a PhD student at the University of Manchester. Um, I study the evolutionary biology of what makes people attractive. And I'm going to share with you um, my PhD project that I've just started on sexual imprinting. So you might have heard of Freud's um, Oedipus complex, the idea that we have a sexual attraction to our opposite sex parent. Um, and this idea is pretty much is, is kind of ignored in conventionary psycholog uh, psychology because Freud never actually scientifically tested this idea. Um, it has the obvious criticism that any that any species who uh, that desires um, incest will go will quickly go extinct um, because of the the uh, the well-known genetic uh, downsides of, of incest. Um, however, we do see Oedipus-like effects in other animals. So this is Claudio, he lives in London Zoo, and from a very young age he was bullied by the other chickens. So they placed him amongst some sheep, and he was raised in a family of sheep. And um, now he only ever spends time with sheep, he doesn't socialise with other chickens, and he's even tried to mate with female sheep. So... Uh, <laughs> And so this has been seen in, um, in lots of different animals, um, including um, all known species of bird. So if you, so the one on the left, um, that, that is a red feather that has been glued to her head. And um, when she raises sons, those sons will grow up and they will only prefer um, females who have this red feather glued to their head. Um, we also see it in sheep and goats. So if you take a baby goat and you put it in a family of sheep, the sheep will raise that goat. And when the goat matures, it will only try to mate with other sheep and vice versa. Um, so we see, it in a, uh, we see this, uh, this kind of Oedipus-like effect in a lot of different animal species. And that implies that um, it's, it, may well be a, it may well have an evolutionary advantage. Um, that is, uh, a, individuals who selected mates that resembled their their family and their, uh, their parents um, would, uh, had, an, had an advantage. So this has led evolutionary biologists to reimagine it as sexual imprinting. And the main difference is rather than being specifically attracted to your parent, you're attracted to someone who is like your parent, and rather than being drawn by your unconscious... Um, okay, so we see this in humans. Um, so if I were to take uh, any one of you and I would measure all the facial dimensions of your partner and your opposite sex parent, um, we'd find that they would they more than likely match up more than we would expect by chance. And um, people who are mixed race tend to um, prefer the tend to have a preference for the ethnicity of their opposite sex parent compared to their same sex parent. So, if I were born to a black mother and a white father, I would imprint on my black mother, and I would prefer black women more than white women. There's even evidence that boys who grow up around a heavily smoking mother are more likely to go on to have a sexual fetish for women who smoke. Um, so, there's there's a lot of evidence in animals and also in in humans. Um, so if it's, an, if it's an evolutionary thing, um, it, it must have a function, it must be adaptive. Evolution doesn't often um, give us things for, for nothing, really. Um, so I'm going to quickly take you through some of the possible ideas which I will be exploring in my PhD. So it might help us find mates who are adapted to the local environment. So these are, these are Tibetans, they are biologically adapted to live at higher climates. So the idea is that Tibetan children will imprint on their parents and they will seek out other Tibetans. Um, and they will avoid mainland Chinese. And, and, and that's good because mainland Chinese are not adapted to their higher climate and would probably make poorer partners, they're more likely to suffer health problems. Um, so it may well allow us to find mates who are adapt, adapted to our specific local environment. Um, it might also help us find a good parent for our future kids. So um, the idea is that if your parent raises you well, then seeking someone who resembles them might um, steer you towards someone who will also be a good parent. And we see some um, evidence in humans for this, um, because people are more likely to imprint on their opposite sex parent when they've had a good emotional relationship with them during childhood. When we, uh, when we have a poor emotional relationship with our parent, we are less likely to imprint on them and we do not seek mates that resemble them. It may just be a byproduct of species recognition, uh, recognition. We're not born knowing what species we are and what other species look like. So, it may, and it may well be that we just learn what species is the correct one to mate with by our parents. And you can see it going wrong here. 
Um, it may also be about sex recognition. So from an evolutionary point of view, um, you, you, the, you need to learn the, uh, the, kind of the correct sex to mate with, the one that will produce kids. And um, we're not born knowing what a man or a woman is or the difference. So it may well be that we learn through our parents. So these, a lot of these different explanations, and I hope to kind of disentangle them and kind of weigh the evidence of them during my PhD over the, uh, over the next three years. So I hope to be able to come back here in a couple of years' time and present to you what I found and hopefully give you an update on this. So, uh, so thank you for listening.